Fontaine continues to fail to disappoint with the release of the Hydro Archon Farina, the premier support DPS damage buffer. And in this build guide, we're gonna be arming you with the knowledge for the best artifacts, party setup, as well as weapons so you can make the most out of this amazing character. And my foundations are rock solid. Unlike other Fontaine characters, Farina has the unique ability to do both Numa as well as Oisa align hydro damage with her normal attacks. Outside of that though, you won't be using her normal attacks that much at Constellation Zero. The core of her kit's gonna come from her elemental skill, which is gonna provide a 20 second cooldown, 30 second duration, where it's going to summon three adds, and these three adds will attack nearby opponents at unique intervals, prioritizing the active character's target and doing hydro damage based on Farina's own max HP. When they attack, if any of your party members are above 50% HP, it will drain HP from all of those party members and increase the damage by up to 140% of their original damage. In Numa form, instead of applying hydro and doing damage off field, it instead will summon a singer of many waters who will heal nearby active characters based on the max HP of Farina at unique intervals. And I will level with you at Constellation Zero, the Numa form healing is pretty much, well, not the greatest thing. A lot of the time you're gonna be spending your time as Farina in the DPS Oisa form, summoning the three different salon members, doing hydro damage and draining HP of all nearby party members. Because not only is it going to boost the damage of your party as well as apply hydro, it's also gonna help you maximize her elemental burst, let the people rejoice. Upon activation, you will have a 18 second duration, 15 second cooldown elemental burst that will keep track of the decreases or increases of any of your party members HP. Around every 1% of HP decreased or increased, you will generate one fanfare stack. Each fanfare stack is gonna give everyone in your party a damage bonus. At Constellation Zero and max fanfare stacks of 300, this is going to be a 75% damage bonus for all party members in your party. And yes, that includes Farina. And this burst does have a 60 energy cost with a 15 second cooldown. So you are gonna need a significant amount of energy recharge depending on the team that you're using her with. But more on that later. Farina's first ascension, Endless Waltz, will give you a little bit of bonus healing, but only if the active character is overhealed by anyone other than Farina. So you will need another healing in your team to take advantage of this passive talent and you will get a decent amount of bonus healing every single time that you overheal your active party member. And one very important thing to know about this Ascension talent is you don't need to have her in the healing mode of her elemental skill for this to activate. You can leave her in her DPS form. Her second Ascension talent, Unheard Confession, is going to be buffing up her elemental skill. While you're in DPS form, you're gonna get a damage bonus to that damage that your elemental skill, three different pets, will do based on increases to Farina's maximum HP. Whereas if you're in the healing form, you will get an increased speed to the heal interval so you'll get faster healing over time. Both the offensive and defensive bonuses from Unheard Confession max out at 40,000 max health from your Farina. As we move into building your Farina, we need to touch on the very important thing of energy recharge. If you don't have enough energy recharge, your Farina will just not work as well as you want her to. You wanna always be able to have the elemental burst off cooldown when it's available as soon as possible. And this can wildly vary depending on what sort of enemies you're fighting, the amount of enemies you're fighting and the team composition that you're using. This little chart will give you a nice little guide on exactly what you should be aiming for for the types of parties you're putting your Farina in. For example, if Farina's your only Hydro character and you you don't really have any party members that can generate a significant amount of energy or particles and they're not using Favonius weapons, you're going to need a ton of energy recharge. However, for every Hydro member you're running or Xing Cho with a sacrificial sword or another character with a Favonius weapon in your party, you can decrease the amount of energy recharge that your Farina is going to need. When it comes to artifact sets, the Golden Troop 2 and 4 piece bonuses are absolutely amazing for Farina. She's going to spend most of the time off field and so this elemental skill damage bonus is going to be amazing for for her. It's gonna really allow her to be that sub DPS hydro applicator off of the field. It really is just by far her best artifact set. If you don't have it yet, feel free to go ahead and farm this up from its own domain because the four piece hunter set, which shares the domain with Golden Troop, is absolutely amazing with any Farina team at all, as she enables you to max out that four piece bonus for 36 crit chance on any main field on field driver you wanna use her with in any party. And while you could use a more supportive setup like Tenacity of the Milliset or even Noblest Oblige for a Farina party, I would have really honestly advised you to go farm up that Golden Troop set. When it comes to main stats for artifacts for Farina, your circlet will always be a crit damage or a crit rate circlet. Whereas your sands will be an HP percent sands unless you need an energy recharge sands to meet the 
energy recharge requirements for her build. Remember, energy recharge takes priority number one over everything. The goblet for the majority of builds will actually be an HP percent goblet. And this is because Fruna has so many ways to bump up the damage percent bonus she will receive for her elemental skill, either from the Golden Troops two and four piece set bonus, as well as her own elemental burst damage bonus. In general, the HP percent is going to be better for you over a Hydro Goblet because of two reasons. Number one, it's gonna be easier to get better substat rolls on an HP percent goblet. And number two, the Hydro Damage Goblet will fall into some diminishing returns due to all the elemental damage bonuses Farina's gonna give you with her setup as well as her elemental burst bonus. There are a few builds where a Hydro Percent Goblet will be better, but we'll talk about that in a second. When it comes to substats, Energy Recharge is always priority number one. Get the Energy Recharge you need for your team's setup. After that, get some crit damage, crit chance, as well as health percent. And don't forget, if you're trying to max out Unheard Confession, her second ascension talent, you wanna hit around 40,000 HP. So the amount of health percent you're gonna want from your artifacts is dependent on if you're gaining access to Hydro Resonance, or if you have a certain constellation. More on that in a second. When it comes to weapon selection, the Festering Desire is by far her best four-star weapon, period. It has energy recharge on it, gives elemental skill damage bonus, and also gives elemental skill crit rate increase. If you weren't around for 1.3 in the original launch of Dragonspine, you might not have access to this, but it's okay. You can spend maybe a couple hours and farm up another easy access weapon, the Ferryman Pipe from Fishing in Fontaine. The Harbinger of Dawn is another free to play option if you are able to keep your HP above 90% for this 28% free crit rate. In most teams with Freena, that might not be something you can do 100% of the time though, and I would advise you to probably try to shy away from this weapon. If you have access access to it, the Jade Cutter is a fantastic five-star option if you have it laying around as it does give HP percent and 44 crit rate as its main stat. It's basically just a good stat stick and well, we kind of like those in Genshin Impact. And of course, her signature weapon, the Splendor of Tranquil Waters, will be her best in slot weapon, assuming you can meet the ER requirements for your team. If you're looking for a significant breakdown of some of her best weapons, go check out the weapon tier list video that we made a little bit prior to the release of this one. And as far as the Favonius Sword goes, I would only recommend running this weapon on your Farina if you're running her in one of those parties we talked about earlier, such as a party where she is the only Hydro character, you don't have anyone else to facilitate energy gain, like no official, one enemy, and no other party members with a Favonius weapon of their own. And one small reminder that the windfall effect of the Favonius weapons can only activate when the character equipped with it is on field. So if you have a rank 5 refinement Favonius sword, that 6 second cooldown and the particles generated can only happen when Farina is actively on the battlefield. So if you want to take the most amount of advantage of the Favonius weapons, you're going to need to swap her in relatively around every six seconds to proc this windfall passive. And one very small thing, the Sacrificial Sword can be used just for the energy recharge on it, but as Farina doesn't generate any particles from activating her elemental skill, the refinement rank ability of Composed isn't going to do anything for you. You're not generating particles from activating it, and it already has a 30 second duration with a 20 second cooldown. It does look kind of good on her though. So remember how we said you might want to run a Hydro Goblet instead of an HP Goblet in some circumstances? Here's the two circumstances. Number one is your weapon selection. If you're using Nilu's signature weapon, the key, that weapon gives you so much bonus HP that you can actually go ahead and use a Hydro Goblet compared to an HP Goblet, and it can be better depending on the substats that you roll. The other circumstance that a Hydro Goblet will be better is if you do have access to Constellation 2, as this will give a massive bonus to Farina's maximum HP, up to 140% increase to her health. So if you're Constellation 2, you could also run a Hydro Goblet instead of an HP% percent Goblet. When it comes to team compositions for Farina, honestly, she works in a lot of the super meta teams already, or even new teams as well. What you want to really maximize with your Farina is having someone to heal the damage that she's doing to everyone with her elemental skill for two reasons. Number one, you'd want to keep everyone above 50% health so that your pets can do bonus damage. You also want to heal up your party member's health as that will increase your fanfare stat gain for your entire team's damage bonus as well. So someone like Baisu or Noel, or even someone like Barbara and Kakomi can shine here. Basically any healer just gets better with Farina in your party. Outside of that, the sky is the limit. You can do some wonky things as well, as you can see in the background with a Favonius Noel driver with Yelan in your team with Farina for double hydro, throw a Fischl in for an electrolyzed taser team, or even go in with an Animo character to swirl the hydro to make your DPS off-field characters such as Farina and Yelan or even Xingqiu do bonus damage. She fits into Bloom and Hyper Bloom teams as well, using the likes of Yao Yao or Baisu as your Dendro healer. Basically, 
if you just want to do more damage, as long as you have a healer in that party to facilitate your Farina skill and burst, you're going to find a good use for her there. Hopefully you're armed now with everything you need to know about Farina. If you want to see how I'm going to be using her with Noel in a Favonius healer driver build, sub for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care guys.